I gotta tell you, the questions are not that easy. I'll try my best, but yeah, they're deep, deep stuff. So I think that we are all trying to answer the questions for ourselves. Yes, ma'am. I, I like, like that. that we are going to use a lot of F words on this call and some people may be triggered. Are we gonna? Can we? Can we say F words? Faith. <laughs> <laughs> So we have a lot of good F words. That's true. It's, it doesn't have to just be that. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Wow. <laughs> I'm supposed to introduce you. <clears throat> Here you go. What the fuck? The first F word of the show. <laughs> You know, Hi everyone, today I'm talking to Evelina Konendik, a life coach for immigrants and Evelina is supporting her immigrant clients in shaping lives filled with confidence and self-fulfillment. Welcome Evelina. Thank you for having me. And today we are going to talk about faith, the importance of having faith and developing faith. I want to start from um, you clarifying your stance on religion because the word faith is usually associated with religion. I would not associate myself with any religion. Mm -hmm. um, in fact, really, when we look back, when we look at history, there has been so much damage done to our psyche overall through the religion, right? I, I feel that oftentimes religion pushes people away from God. So that's one understanding and one thought on religion. On the other hand, um, I think that in many societies, religion has been extremely helpful where it comes to clarifying values of the society um, and clarifying the direction of decisions made in politics and overall right what happens within the society so there is a very positive aspect to it because it's related to morality um i don't really think it is black and white in any way but for me personally um i have stayed away from religion and in the same time this is a fascinating thing in the same time i absolutely love any type of music <laughs> that has to do with God, I listen to, like right now I have a CD in my car. I still listen to CDs sometimes, not always, but sometimes I do. And because this one, the one that I have is, um, it's a Sufi music. So, you know, it's Sufi chants. And so I drive and I sing to Allah and then I'll come back home today. This morning I was listening to Kirtan, which was, um, I think one of the, um, chance was uh, singing to Ganesha and then when I go to church on Sunday I sing to Christ and and, and Christ is right um, I would not associate myself with Christianity but in the same time when I pray that's the direction I go to even though I listen to these different songs it is ultimately the Christ that I go to well, thank you and uh, I am with you there I left religion at the age of five so I knew from that age that this is not a place for me to be. And at the same time, I explored so many different spiritual philosophies. So thank you for this. We agree on this. And even if we didn't agree on this, we are talking about faith. And faith is outside of religion. So I know that faith was important for you when you came to America. Tell me how did immigration influence your, your journey with faith it was huge so i came um to the us in 2005 i was um i just turned 24 in november and i came in january so i was pretty much 24 years old and um you know back then coming from poland like it was easy for us like i made the same or similar decision to you when i was very young it just didn't make sense to me that we would, it didn't make any sense that we would call a house of God, this big stinky building. Like I walk outside and there's this beauty of nature and everything. And I'm supposed to believe that God lives in that building. Like it didn't make any sense to me, right? So having that like very young 
uh, mind and questioning such a basic um, understanding uh, of it all. The Polish Catholic Church makes it very easy to walk away from, right? (laughs) (laughs) Yes. It's so simple. Yes. If you think for yourself and like depending obviously on your own life experience, but typically it's not that hard to find yeah. contradiction and just walk away from the whole experience. So, well, but this is what happened, right? And I, I feel very, very grateful with my mom and my dad because they were like, oh, you can just whatever you want to just don't join any sect, but whatever, right? So they have given me space to explore different religions, which I've done that. Uh, that's why I'm like so in love and so open to different music from different religions because I have a ch- I had a chance to experience that as I was exploring. But uh, when I was coming here to the US in 2005, I did not have any religious practice developed. I believed in angels. I liked the idea that I have a guardian angel. And that was pretty much it. Of course, I knew how to say, you know, the basic prayers but I did not understand the value of praying. Like none of that was clear in my mind at all. And then what happened is I found myself in a completely different reality, right? So I came by myself to the US. I did not have anyone with me. Um, I came as an au pair, which means that I was living with a family in Grand Rapids, Michigan. And I was taking care of two girls. One was seven, one was 11. So I I had heavy responsibility on my shoulder. I have shoulders. I had to make sure that they would be safe with me, right? That it would be okay. Now, what I underestimated was how important it would be that I can, one, communicate effectively in English. My English was okay, but it was not that good. Especially when I came first, I did not understand that I will really go through a hard roadblock uh, in my mind when it comes to communication. When I landed in New York, I could communicate in English, no problem. When I landed in Michigan, after a few days, it's like I forgot all English. It was terrifying. I don't know why that happened, but it happened. I think it's maybe the stress of it all. Um, I don't know. But it being in a in a position where I am responsible for two girls, right? I'm their nanny. And they are, the, the family, the parents are depending on me to take care of these little girls. And in the same time, I know that I can't communicate well in this language. I understand the responsibility, but I know that I the chances of me fulfilling it perfectly, where they are actually safe with me, are limited because of my lack of ability to speak very well Mm -hmm. I was terrified terrified that I would be driving them to school and that someone would hit us because I am a decent driver and I knew that but I was afraid that someone else would hit us that there's an accident somebody is really hurt and I'm calling 911 and I cannot communicate well enough and someone dies because of my lack of ability to speak. That's well. a big fear, right? It was. Yes, it was. And so what I, the only thing that I knew to do was to pray. And so I would pray like hundreds of times a day. Anytime a thought would come of some sort of a fear, right, that this could go wrong, I immediately prayed. And the prayers were answered. There were a lot of miracles happening around me, seriously. There were things happening where I was like, how did that, what? How did that happen, right? And so I kept on getting these confirmations that I am being protected, that I am being taken care of. Um, It aligns today for me with my understanding of overall how it works. I believe that because of the free will that we have in this world, um, our helpers cannot intervene unless we ask. And I wasn't asking before. And now all of a sudden, right, January 2005, and I'm asking all that time. (laughs) <laughs> so you reconnected with that divine help exactly I, I have this image of like you know for 25 years of my life my guidance my angels were like just snoozing on bed <laughs> waiting for me right and then all of a sudden we 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 like panic uh-huh. Evelina needs help and now Evelina needs help all the time and they're like and they were ready Working three shifts and drinking coffee and <laughs> first of all i i am glad that we clarified that faith 
is usually a religious term, but we are separating it, in this conversation at least, we are separating it from religion. And you know what? I think it might be important for people who left religion because they couldn't stand their religion, they were not accepted in their religion, or they felt there was just no love, <laughs> there was more judgment than love in their religion. It didn't teach them anything useful except to judge and feel guilty. And fear and, God, right? Fear yes, God, fear love, yes. supposedly. There's so many contradictions. It's yes, and I, I feel so bad about people who believe that their God will punish them. If you switch from belief in the punishing and angry God to the belief in loving God who has unconditional love for you, which is a huge leap of faith, but also leap of concept of God, whatever Absolutely. it, whatever it is, because these days I'm talking a lot to people who feel, oh, God is this universal divine matrix. It permeates mm -hmm. everything. But people who left their religion might have thrown away God, God and their faith to the sidelines of their life and they are not accessing their spirituality. They are not participating in the needs of their soul because they associate this part of life with religion or even the religion did not teach them to look within and to actually have spirituality as a part of daily life and daily self-care. So I think that this conversation could be useful to those people. I'm thinking about those people who left religion and they feel like they don't belong. That is, that's the damage. Kurde flak, no. Kurde flak. Okay, tego jeszcze nie słyszałam. Mm -hmm. Sure, yeah, it, it feels like it was the biggest damage that the church overall has done to us as um, as human beings, I feel like, right? Pointing out outside of us to look for God outside of us, not that we don't have right love that supports the whole existence, like that's ultimately what I believe. For us to be looking outside of ourselves as the source of some sort of support even, that's the biggest misconception I feel like and the biggest damage yeah mm -hmm. you know I actually catch myself still struggling with this that when I'm asking for something or I'm thinking about the higher power I still instinctively think about the outside that it is somewhere out there so I think it takes continuous practice to return to ourselves in a way that, in a way, it brings God, whatever it is, it brings the universal field of consciousness slash God close into my heart. So is I it possible that you're that like that is always there, but you're tuning yourself to it? Yes, it is always there. It must be always there because I am here. It is within every one of us because because each of us is here so it must be there in every form of existence but we separate ourselves from it mm -hmm. so we want to belong we want to feel oneness that's probably the ultimate place where we want to be we are living here and whatever we are doing we are on the way back home mm -hmm. to return to this oneness and that's that creates this um, internal longing for something and throughout life we do a lot of things that's supposed to fulfill that longing and we also miscreate yeah but 
that oneness is probably closer than we think. If we tune in and reconnect with that part of us within, with that God within. What comes to my mind is original sin. When you're saying um, the, the separation, right? When you're talking about it, that's mm. like we're chasing something. We're chasing the belonging. There's this like, we want to be part back of that. That's the way I understand it. And I'm I'm going to simplify it because I like to simplify things to understand them better. Oh, but we I have like, to. Yeah, yeah. I feel like that's that makes sense to me. This theory that the original sin was us separating from the oneness of God. And we immediately felt guilt. So the guilt is what keeps us separated from it. That's why forgiveness is a huge part of the spiritual right concepts, the forgiveness, because it's ultimately us forgiving ourselves for separating from the oneness and then going back to it. That's like us forgiving ourselves. And that's what brings us closer. Again, like I said, I would be simplifying the whole concept, but um, that... You see, in my spiritual like search, that was the one thing that I could never really understand and never really made sense to me. It was the whole thing of the original sin. Like, what original sin? Like, I, I don't uh, get it. Like, well, how are we guilty, right? You, because you, you said the word original sin, and I, I don't know, what is it really? Because if we look in the Bible, then it doesn't make much sense. What is that original sin? It's yeah, it's the separation. That's what made sense to me, right? Because just like you said, the idea of original sin, how it's explained and simplified by church, never made sense to me. I'm like, what what am I guilty of? Like what for like what? Right? I'm a child of God. Like, why are you throwing this guilt on me? And what salvation from what? Right? None of that made sense. And then I learned this concept of um us actually feeling guilty about separating from God hmm. and hmm. stepping into this world of illusion. At the same time, we did not separate as a soul. We did not separate from God because we chose to. We were kind of sent on the journey of explore, exploration and learning to return back to the source with our decision or was it the decision I, of the I existence know. i don't know i think we were sent you think we were sent well what about the free will then how does free will go with the idea of someone else deciding for us i think that free will is something that we have here on earth okay and we don't have free will outside of here i don't know that I don't know oh, me either, right? We're all just guessing. That's yes, the fun of it. Guessing. Yes, yes. <laughs> There's one book that I started reading about spiritual hypnosis. And in that book, there was a concept of practicing returning back to God. And the author says that we all have a sense of separation and not belonging because of that original because we left the source mm -hmm. and it could be that we still feel the wound that original sin how they call it but it's not really a sin it was simply the feeling of being separated from the source mm -hmm. so the way we heal that wound is we practice in our spiritual practice to return to the source that and makes sense. And that's why creating a feeling of a sense of timelessness feels so good and nourishing because in that place, when we return to the source, there is no time. And through creating timelessness, like in meditation or in contemplation prayer, we get a sense of what it may feel like. We kind of go back there for a little bit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I love that idea. And it, it aligns itself really well with how I understand it too. Mm -hmm. uh, and I like that you said it's, it wasn't a sin. Maybe it wasn't a sin. Maybe that's 
the just that extra guilt that's thrown at us even in language right so you have developed your faith at the time when you were also facing fears Mm -hmm. so your faith was remedy to your fears yeah and then miracles followed yeah, yeah, you, you, you could summarize it that way. And it's interesting in my personality because I'm a Scorpio mm-hmm. uh, and I like control. And, you know, I was thrown in a place where I had no control. Mm-hmm. So, and there was just so many things that have happened overall. There was just a lot of challenges. Like coming from Poland, I already had my degree, I was teaching, right before I came, I was teaching um, Polish language in middle school, so, you know, just even the experience of it, right, you're stepping into a classroom where you have an average 38 kids that you have to occupy for 45 minutes with different topics and you have to be in control of that classroom and we're talking about teenagers that I was only like eight years older than them so I had to really step in into like my bossy bossy Mm -hmm. Evelina Uh, and uh, I go from that right being some sort of authority for 45 minutes at a time five days a week and forcing myself into that space to becoming a nanny that can barely speak the language that is being told by the seven-year-old what to do um yeah very very different very humbling <laughs> contrast I can very imagine. humbling contrast it, it teaches you distance to some degree right i had an had an idea of who i am when i was coming from poland or like um it's it's like we with you know getting our degrees and everything like we we're working towards some sort of the status right i could justify self-respect this is funny but i feel like that degree was allowing me to justify self-respect and then i come here and this happens and um oh so you mean my self-respect it's not related to what other people think about me because I have zero control they will think about me, right? Because yeah. most of them are actually going to interact with me and think that I'm stupid because I can barely speak this language, right? I mean, it was there was a lot of challenges. But in all of it, the one thing was steady and the steadiness was that I was being supported through it all by something bigger than me. And and yeah, so that was the beginning of it all for me where it comes to my faith. And you know what? I honestly feel like the biggest difference is that it was my experience of life that was supporting my mental processes about God. It wasn't just me thinking about, oh, this is this, this is that. It was my actual living experience. Tell me more. Well, yeah, the fact that I would pray and... I'll, just simple situations okay let's say that um well I lost a cell phone this is a funny story I lost a cell phone remember walking with my girls coming back from school and then going for a walk and me realizing on that walk that I don't have my cell phone and then looking for it thinking maybe I have lost it somewhere on a path um and then thinking well maybe not and I'm looking and look I can I cannot find it and I'm terrified by the way right because oh my gosh this is a big deal (laughs) At one point, I made a decision as I'm walking like first time down the same path looking for the cell phone. I made a decision. No, it's most likely in my room. I left it maybe in the room. I'm going to go look in my room. And I'm walking, walking, walking. And I feel like something stops me, takes my head, puts it down, and there's the cell phone, right? Wow. Um, those kind of situations where it's like, what? Mm-hmm. It just there. It appeared in front of me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Incredible. It sounds so normal. And it wasn't in the drama of it all having the contrast of like oh there it is you're taken care of don't have to worry um that's the experience i'm talking about and just just so i'm clear on this because it isn't like we're talking about my beginnings in 2005 i have been in the us for almost 20 years um my faith that's where it all started but really my faith how to say this the foundation of it was maybe established then but the continuation of it has been established through meditation 
through the spiritual studies, but a lot of it has been the empiric experience has been the meditation. Okay. So if it, if I was to just rely on those experiences back then, I don't think my life would have been today what it is. Because the biggest difference, if I was to simplify this, and this is terrible simplification, and it just, I realize that we can totally, this is a theory that can be broken down into pieces very easily and questioned very easily. But what comes to my mind is if I was to compare myself, and sometimes I do, right? Because we do this, it's our brain, we'll compare ourselves. The difference between how my mind works today and how a mind of someone who might not have this experience or might not have might not feel as supported as I do is the questioning of daily experience is the allowing of the fear to step in it's the locking the doors behind yourself every time you leave the house it's the suspicion of something um, bad happening you know I I am an immigrant living here in the U.S. on my own I could be terrified if I allow my brain go in that direction, right? Because there's so many terrible things that could happen to me. I could be going there and yeah. I'm choosing not to. One, because I have had direct experience of God supporting me and I continuously go back into that area so that I feel that from within my soul. And two, it's also, I feel like, what is the difference? One is that I don't have the fears. And two, I think it's also the courage of right? courage to make decisions in life that require bigger risk that's I feel like if there's anything that would be it mm -hmm. the courage yeah mm -hmm. okay I wanted also to ask faith in what we are developing faith in what it's not only faith in the universal mind or God or however we want to call it it's actually also faith in the immediate future that things are going to be all right. It's the trust in the positive development of things. You actually have a choice. You have free will. Free will is about where are you directing your thoughts? If you notice that they go in the direction of fear, miscreation, fear miscreates. And you have, everyone has a free will to direct their thoughts in the direction of faith. A lot of books, the spiritual books, they present the choice between fear and love. To me, it was always the choice between fear and faith. We feel more love flowing through our lives when we have more faith, because that faith create, creates miracles. Also. We are developing the faith in ourselves, right? That we can do it, that we can go through it, that we can create what we want or that we can heal. That's it. And, you know, in the same time, I'm like, okay, everything you're saying, totally agree with it. But what comes to my mind is that the mind is polarized, right? That we have the good and the bad and we have this continuous, like, okay, go towards the positive, go towards the positive and that in itself and struggle. So there's that. And then I think about, the experience of stillness within that timelessness you were talking about how that the experience of it gives a and the peacefulness of it right gives a contrast to that polarity of the mind and allows for us to go from this polarized world into into this calmness where there's break from that exact battle so the faith to me today building it and that that experience of timelessness becomes that rock and the support of this life overall because you know there's the whole thing about okay what did you gain from meditation nothing but did, what did i lose right anxiety uh, fear of death right all of those things right when thinking about faith overall and development of faith, that's what comes to my mind. On one hand, yes, we have the choice of the thought and creating on purpose and developing faith in ourselves. But on the other hand, I think to myself, yes, for me, that actual experience has been more influential.
in my faith in my experience um, of developing the faith overall right that has made the biggest difference I remember there was a time in my life when I would meditate for an hour every day for six months I was meditating for one hour every day and what was happening around me as a consequence of it wasn't like these huge shifts but in the same time there were shifts happening inside of me and I turned out to be a different person at the end of it and the one thing I can tell this is the one the most obvious thing which is huge really especially for us immigrants but not only for us immigrants for people overall was my ability to speak publicly without huge fear so I used to have it where I would speak in English publicly I would it would feel like when I'm put in a situation to stand up and speak at front of the team I was working with it was like about maybe 20 people in the room right and all of a sudden my boss is like okay Evelina tell us about da 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 and I would forget all the words my head would sweat and I felt like gosh, I have been here already for 10 years. I should be able just to stand up and speak. But as a consequence of developing this tolerance for me within me, because when you meditate for an hour, you spend time in this inner space, right? What happened is I somehow, someway grounded myself so much in myself that ever since I, I can just stand up and speak interesting i have never heard of meditation to be the technique to overcome fear of public speaking but you basically spend time with yourself and develop the acceptance mm -hmm. yeah it's, it's like it's something has happened and i really honestly cannot point out exactly what it was if it was a gradual process or if it was some kind of a switch i have no idea but i know that the contrast of it was really, really big, right? There, there came a time when I just stood up and I just spoke. Amazing. Some channels have opened and I was just able to speak the same way I speak in English as I speak in Polish publicly. Some channels have opened. Yeah. Channels, so maybe channels. a channel from my heart to my throat. <laughs> maybe that channel. And to your head and to your aid ninth tenth chakra of inspiration right definitely yeah. all of that and it's interesting that you said channel channels have opened since we have so many channels energetic channels in that's the true you know what that is true i never said it like this but this would this would really make sense that there must have been energy was getting blocked before right i thought i felt blocked Mm -hmm. I felt like I could not think because there was literally blockages within my energetic field and the meditation must have opened it all up. It's easy to imagine that we may have faith in the positive development of things, that we dream about something and we have faith that it's going to happen. But what when we are facing certain final situations in life? like somebody you love is dying or what would you tell a person who is facing those final things in life you know overall overall for any sort of stressor what comes to my mind is going back into the stillness right because life will be changing we know it's continuous change there is the steadiness and there's continuous change and the steadiness touching the steadiness the steadiness allows for a relief from the stress of the situation itself that steadiness is the continuation of life or that stillness stillness stillness, stillness. that's the that's the word stillness okay. stillness. stillness that you touch on stillness that you touch on when you meditate when you go deep within Mm -hmm. um that for me seems to be the biggest solution mm -hmm. outside of mind management mm -hmm. recognizing how am i creating my own fear by thinking certain way that's very helpful too but at the end of the day when those big big shifts happen and our worlds crumble that steadiness that stillness that's a relief you have a tornado and you have the quiet 
in it, right? It's going back into the quiet. Mm -hmm. To that unshakable place. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Where we feel carried by something that is steady and not like all over the place, right? Would you like to summarize this conversation in some way? If there would be a message for somebody who is on the way to develop their faith, what would you like to tell that person? Well, what comes to my mind is that as we create this world, right, we're creating it with the thought. It's one of the levels of creation. And our relationship to faith or to God, it's just thoughts about it. That's the way I understand it anyway. So there's two things that come to my mind. One is clarifying that for yourself so that you are not kind of lost in it all. And then number two is actually experiencing, giving yourself a chance to experience that stillness we're talking about. If someone was like, Evelina, if you were to choose, do you want the experience or you want the idea of it? I will always tell you I want the experience. So faith is remedy to fear. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we could. Yeah, we could simplify it that way. Yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. If somebody would like to work with you, how do they find you? Well, you can find me on my website, lifecoachforimmigrants.com. You can find me on Facebook. You can find me on Instagram and LinkedIn and my podcast, Empowerment for Immigrants. If you are an immigrant and you feel like you would like to improve your experience of living in the U.S., come talk to me. Thank you so much, Evelina. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it. This was wonderful.